Thank you. You threw you threw conventional exercise in the garbage, and yeah. you said this is what I'm doing, and everyone said, all right, I'm doing it. We all got results. It was my buddy Rob and I, we saw the magazine stand because magazines were popular back then. That was the social media of the day. And we saw one of the magazines with Dorian Yates on the cover. Dorian Yates made a massive transformation. We saw the pictures and said, holy fuck, what did he do to change from Mr. Olympia pre-picture to Mr. Olympia post-picture? This guy's gonna kill it. What changed though was his training philosophy. But he started listening to Mike Menser and had a conversation with him about high intensity training. Sure enough, Rob and I, my workout partner, we jumped onto this bandwagon right away. We also saw him in a seminar in Toronto. Dorian Yates was the hottest commodity in bodybuilding and hearing him speak, asking him questions, he just sounded intelligent, he looked massive, everything made sense. We ended up buying the high intensity book, Heavy Duty by Mike Menser and we followed his principles. I asked my university professor, my exercise physiology professor, I said, what do you think of this? He said, it makes sense. The thing is, why don't you prove it right or wrong? You're a determined guy. You've been in my labs. Go and try it out. See for yourself. Uh, pre Dorian, I mean, you had guys like Lee Haney and Gaspari. They were training like six days a week, twice a week, chest, twice a week, legs, everything twice a week. And they weren't that big. And they were not giving enough recovery time. People started training less was one of the factors in seeing bigger and more muscular physiques. When you came on and started telling people about your training methodologies, guys got huge, yeah. if you remember. I went from 200 pounds to 215 pounds. We were training 45 minutes a day, a few times a week, maybe three times a week. I can't remember exactly, but our numbers skyrocketed. I started getting bigger. My arms were 18.6 inches. That kind of matters to natural bodybuilders and just an explosion in progress, an explosion in number increments and our size just, I got bigger, I got stronger. And the other thing too was, I felt like I was motivated to go into the gym. Now understand in the past training six days a week, two hours a day, you were not motivated to go in the gym. You were exhausted. But now training every other day, I felt like a tiger wanting to go in, wanting to make a difference, wanting to completely smash my numbers. You know, people have a short memory yeah. and, and they stop doing it. Well, it seems like everyone's got their own training system today. And yeah. most of it's a high volume pump type workouts. And I just don't think that that's going to build massive dense physiques that would then you see a whole bunch of gourmet trainers out there a bunch of influencers they may have won a contest they may not have they may have taken steroids and they look good or genetically they look good and because of that they believe they can sell a program they take a weekend course they're certified quote unquote certified and they really are bullshit coaches and they're going to preach their system of training it's like do what's been working forever high intensity works why would I follow some bozo, some bozo influencer who's 22 years old, who's done jack shit other than the fact that he's got a six pack and looks half decent, makes no sense. I'm gonna go with a tried and true method that makes sense. I think the coaches are smarter than the bodybuilders these days. I was like, why do you say that? I said, because the coaches are making a lot of money to give out bullshit advice most of the time. Okay, Mr. Coach, what have you done? You know, where do you get this information from? Where do you come to these conclusions? Have you done it yourself? Hey guys, if you've got a coach and they haven't won any contests of any prestige, drop that coach right now. So what are the rules with high intensity? Well, you've got to go to failure. You have to basically go above and beyond what you're normally capable of so that your body actually can grow and adapt. That's number one, that's very hard to do. Number two, your training needs to be infrequent because you need to recuperate and overcompensate from the gym. That's number two. And number three, you need to seek progression. Write down your results, try to beat your results as your strength increases. As you provide that time under tension, that muscle damage, what you're gonna find is if you allow yourself enough recovery, you're actually gonna grow, you're actually gonna get bigger. I see probably 99% of people out there who, who don't adhere to those rules. And they're very simple rules. And if you can put your ego to rest yeah. and follow those rules, you get really good results from it. Why do we go to the gym? We go to the gym to get results. That should be your main priority. When I was professional bodybuilding, if for me to get optimum results required me to stay in the gym 14 hours a day and lift weights, I would have done it. If it required me to eat dog shit, I would have done it. But I knew that it didn't. So I spent an hour in the gym four times a week and I got the best results. You have to do less to get more, but you have to be much more focused and intense yeah. when you're doing what you're doing. Less time in the gym, less volume, more focus, more intensity. As Mike O'Hearn says in this next clip, 
he talks about the fact that when you work your chest one day, two, three, four days later, is your chest ready to perform or do you still feel soreness? You just not feel right. You don't feel like you're fully recovered. And I think sometimes what you've got to do is you've got to pay attention to that recovery period and how your body feels before attacking it again. If you feel something's not right, well, that's a big red flag. So what you do is you allow your body to recuperate, you allow it to adapt, and then you hit the gym stronger. And then you have quantitative evidence that you've improved because your numbers are up. And then over time, you start looking bigger. You're not gonna notice it right away. You look in the mirror every day, you're not gonna notice it, but people are gonna notice it and they're gonna say three months later, man, you look a lot bigger, you look a lot stronger. But if you could go back, what would be some of the changes that you would make? Too many sets and reps, no, I don't think you need to do 30 sets three times a week. Is it the idea to crush the muscle, feed the muscle, let it rest? So you would say the young you wouldn't do as much volume? Oh no. It's kind of like you light a match, ow, done. What I did, I lit the lighter. <laughs> I got so lucky doing it like that early. Mm -hmm. I think I discovered early that, I, first of all, I wasn't recovering. It became apparent to me, it wasn't about how much I destroyed in the gym, it's how well I recovered. Can I recover from a chest workout by the next workout? But let me preface that. The people who were getting the results in the gym were the people who were willing to push it high intensity till failure and sometimes beyond and then back off, let your body rest. But the reality is most people don't have the capacity to push it that far. And that's, again, I've mentioned this in a previous video. That's one of the biggest drawbacks of high intensity training. Most people, you push them to any kind of extent, they're gonna back off. I trained somebody, we had squats to do, and we took him to that point of momentary failure. And then I asked him to go above and beyond. He had to excuse himself to go to the bathroom and puke his guts out. And sure enough, I realized, man, this guy can't handle it. He's a strong guy. He's got a lot of muscle mass, his heart, his lungs couldn't handle it. And trying to approach the intensity that would stimulate his legs because they were pretty big was not going to happen unless we took him above and beyond what he was normally capable of doing. But again, the limitation was, did he have the capacity to train that hard? Did he have that pain tolerance? Did he have that guts wanting the results? Did he have the heart and lung capacity to succeed with that kind of training? Most people don't. I had another guy doing basic barbell curls. And I said, okay, two more. He says, no, I'm done, I'm done. I can't do any more. I said, then just get out of the gym, we're done. If you can't go above and beyond what you normally do, you're not gonna see any progress. That's called adaptation. And if you're not willing to go that far, you're not gonna see any results. Get the fuck out of here. And that's usually the case. Most people are not willing to train that intensely. And therefore, this program is not gonna work. People ultimately did not want to work that hard. No matter what the client said going in when you actually started to push them hard you could tell they were pulling back and so now you have a choice do i live and die by this philosophy no matter what or do i give the person a little bit less than that philosophy to keep them coming as a client